welcome to the Gothic Unicorn. And today we're going back to 148 scale. Now, back before I even finished my Raven's Perch build, I had in mind what the next project was going to be. I got the house, I'd got an idea of the backstory that was going to um, bring it to life, and thanks to two years worth of advent calendars, I'd got a lot of stuff to go in it. But it's a big, tiny scale project. I think I want to do a few things to alter the house a bit, um, to make it a bit more unique, and I'm not sure exactly how I'm gonna do that yet. And also, I want to do something that is going to be finished fairly quickly. So with that in mind, I actually turned to the um, kits that I got for Christmas. And I've got two kits from the Dead End collection by Petite Properties. And I'm actually going to be working on this one, which is number 13. Now, this is designed to be the stereotypical haunted house, all boarded up. I'm not sure if I'm going to actually put the boards across the windows and the doors. I may actually have it as a um, active building. I don't know. I'm going to turn it into a shop. And so to get my hand back in, because it's been a while since I've worked on anything in this scales, I'm going to start today by making up a couple of kits that I've got for shop furnishings. This will then give me an idea of how much space I'm going to have in there and what I can do with it. So I'm going to put the house kit aside for now with much reluctance because I'd love to get it out and start putting it together and um, have a look at the um, kits for the interior. These two kits came in the 2020 advent calendar. I've got the Aberdashery counter and an island display counter. Now, when I got them, I had no intention of making a shop. And I'm still not 100% sure what kind of shop it's going to be. I don't think it's going to be an Aberdashery. I would actually like it to be more of a unusual shop and there is an antiques place that we visit from time to time where one of the units has got some of these old aberdashery units with the drawers inside um, that they use for displaying other things so that might be the way I go and then I've also got as I say I've also got this island display counter which is just crying out to have a display of something I don't know what yet. Obviously, I'm going to have to figure that out once I look at how you put it together and um, at what stage I need to fill the inside. So, I'm going to decide which one I'm going to open first and um, we'll get started. I've decided to start with the island display counter kit because I can... Um, put this one together and then put the top on, glue the top on afterwards if need be. But I'm going to start off with this and I'm going to start with the pieces still in the um, little bit that they're attached to which makes it far easier. I've just got to go around with my craft knife and um, snip the bits out and I'm going to colour these with one of my alcohol markers. I'm going with chestnut because I tried it and it makes a nice colour and I think it'll be perfect. So all I'm going to do with this is literally put the ink across the pieces. Now these pieces I only need to colour on one side and actually what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to use the um, thick end because 
that way I can get a smoother easier finish so it is as simple as this I'm just going to color them in with the um, marker let it dry see if I need an, a second coat um, obviously some of the bits will be visible on both sides so I will be coloring on the other side as well um, but that's my next job is to just sit here and color in with the alcohol marker now I have only colored the tabs that will be visible on the shelf piece because I want this to look like it was at some point if not now in some way luxurious and what I've got is I've got some um, velvet it's a polyester velvet it's not a um, natural fiber but I'm going to very carefully cover that with that now I literally only want it to be on the top so I am going to put my glue all around the top quite liberally focusing on the edges but making sure that I don't get it all over the um, tabs going to be a fun task because obviously I want to make sure that this is going to be stuck on well in the right places not the wrong ones now I've had the glue sitting out for a little while and so it has gone quite tacky already this is the brilliant thing with this glue is that it does go from being really nice and runny in the first instance to quite tacky and um, manoeuvrable. Manoeuvrable? I don't know if that's the right word. It's just really useful. Now I'm going to put this to the edge of the piece there and I am going to pat it down I'm going to turn it over and yeah that should be okay now this was going to take pretty darn quickly and then I'm going to trim it off now I'm going to actually start off with my little fabric scissors and I am just going to cut off the bulk of the extra this just makes it a bit easier for me when I actually come to trim it so I'm going to give that a little while to dry and I'm going to very carefully trim it down to size and then I'll come back and show you and we can um, start building the um, structure to begin putting the display counter together I've actually um, change the order of the instructions. I've taken out the main piece and I am sticking the acetate um, glass into place. Now I have um, decided this is probably easier and I've got less risk of getting glue all over my um, nice fancy shelf. So all that I've done is I've just put a little bit of glue with my cocktail stick around the um, window aperture. Then I take a little tiny piece of acetate and I'm pretty much lining it up using the top of the piece to um, give me my judgment and then I'm turning it over and I'm using clean cocktail stick to just clear up any glue that has oozed through and there you can see I've got my basic structure and this will go together 
something like this around the shelf. I've got a few bits to um, touch in with the marker and I am just going to do the two ends before I go any further because I'm not sure which one is going to be visible. I think it's that one, but just in case I will do that. And then I've got to go around the bottom as well um, just to um, fill in. Next off I'm going to attach the shelf and to attach the shelf I've got to put glue all the way around it. And again I am going to do this with my cocktail stick. I don't want massive amounts of glue on there. Because I don't need massive amounts of glue. If I put too much on, it will just ooze everywhere. And then I need also to put a little bit of glue onto the tabs. So I'm going to put a little bit on the top and a little bit more on the bottom. I'll put a spot on the sides. But it should be okay. And I'm just going to repeat this for the other side. A good amount on there. A little amount on there. And a bit on these. And then to make it make it a fit I'm going to begin by putting it into there now I need to put some glue and I should have done this so I'm going to start folding this round most importantly, getting the tab into the slot. And then what I want to do is I want, before I just shut that up, to put some glue on the end. So we will now shut this up. And I have to hold it to keep it um, closed while I am waiting for the glue to dry. Because my glue, as I say, is quite tacky, not wet, I am actually in a position where I know that is going to hold. And so I've got there now the basic structure of my island display counter. Obviously, I need to decide what's going in there. I need to touch this up and I need to start sticking the... Um, extra detail panels on. So I'm going to let this dry and then um, we'll come back to it. Adding the details to this piece is pretty easy. It's just a case of a bit of glue on the little panels and then stick it into place. Now looking at the picture it seems like this is actually designed to cover up that slot. The little um, slot where the tab went so that's what I'm doing I'm lining them up just below there just to, just below the glass to cover up the slot I'll just slid it forward so you can see and then it's simple as that clean up any excess glue if you're really careful you won't have any excess glue I did with the first couple that I did but I've got the hang of it now, I was confused because there's six sides and I'd got seven panels. But there is only room for six. And so that one's skew with, straighten him up a bit. I've now got my pieces 
into place and they need to just be allowed to glue away um, glue away cure the, for the glue to cure and then we can move on while I wait for the glue to dry I'm going to prepare the top I've cut the hexagonal frame out of the um, holding piece and I've just gone around the edge with my marker and just coloured the edges just so that it looks like it is a completely um, finished piece. Now, I think that is the right way. I've got this little piece of acetate to stick in place so I'm going to go again go around the edge very carefully adding a small amount of glue I've probably got far too much on here as it stands but we shall see in a moment now obviously once you've glued the glass into the top the next step is to um, stick it on. I'm not going to stick it on for a moment because I'm go then going to go off and um, look for some things to put in it. I've got a few ideas what I want but I've just got to see if I can actually um, get them to work in the way that I would like. So I put that onto there, gently tap it into place and wipe off any glue on this side firstly just so it doesn't stick to my mat and then we'll get the cocktail stick in there and wipe off the glue. Now any glue that you do leave in the corners will actually add to the look of this being um, sort of old and dirty. So if that's the look you want go right ahead and get some glue in the corner but there it is and that is going to fit ever so nicely onto the top of our little um, counter so I'm off to have a look at some tiny little pieces to put in here and um, I'll be back in a moment I've been successful in my search for some tiny little things to put in there and I've made a couple of things from some bits that I found. I found some jump rings, jewellery findings, and with the addition of some little nail art beads, I've turned it into a piece of jewellery. It might be a necklace, it might be a circlet to wear on the head, it's still a little piece of jewellery. And all I'm going to do is I am going to stick this into place with a bit of glue and I'm going to put that, we'll put that there, we will put that there, I'll go with that with the plier, with the pliers, the tweezers even, and then that fits nicely. Now I also found some of these micro beads. Now these are absolutely tiny. I don't know how well you can see on camera but they are tiny. They came in a craft kit that I had and I've never used them. And what I've used those for and I've just had one move so I'm going to have to do some emergency repairs is I've made a necklace. Now oh, come on. To make the necklace I have used a hole punch to make a tiny little pad. I actually used two layers of cardstock and then with my cocktail stick 
I, glue, I drew a glue shape which has become the necklace and then I've put these beads on top and as you can hopefully see you've got the shape that may or may not look like a necklace. Now if I get this in my tweezers I can glue that in place as well. I'm just going to put a blob of glue on the back of this piece and I'm going to position this over there. And if I just pop it down with the tweezers I can keep that in place. Now I could put more pieces in there, I could put more little pads with jewels on but I've only got um, the micro beads in that one colour and I can only find the green nail art beads. So because I've had an idea of what this shop is going to be I've made a little tiny scroll. If you can see that on my hand. Now I've made this the same way I make my scrolls um, in 1 12th scale which is that I have coloured the paper and then rolled it up. Just ordinary copy of paper, It'd probably look like something much much thicker at this scale but that doesn't matter does it? And I'm just going to put some glue on that and I'm going to try and get hold of it with my tweezers. Oh, damn it. Okay, the tweezers don't want to play, the tweezers want to um, make a mess of it, but I can glue it in there. And now it does look like an old scroll of some description. Um, I've actually found some other pieces that I'll show you in a minute, and I think that this um, shop is going to have something of a sort of metaphysical, slightly magical, witchy, etc. kind of a vibe to it. So I think that looks like something old and um, probably mystical. So I'm just going to um, pause the camera a minute while I sort out some fresh glue and we'll stick the lid on. To put the lid on, top on. All I'm going to do is I'm going to go around the top of here with my glue. You probably don't even need a full line like I'm putting on, you could probably just do it with some dots. And there we go. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it in place. A little bit of manoeuvring to make sure that it looks about even and then I can go around the edge and remove any glue that's oozed out. Hopefully not get it all over the rest of the piece. There we go. And here we have my finished island display counter, which hopefully you can see the contents and you can see that it's a nice if slightly battered piece, which is going to be perfect for what I'm thinking this room's going to room, this house is going to become. Just before I start on the second kit, while I was looking for little bits to go in the um, display counter, I found some little charms, which have definitely made me think that this property is going to go sort of magical. So I found some little broom charms which I think are a perfect sort of size to paint up and put in there. I found this um, pumpkin, it was a bit on the big side but does it 
really matter if the pumpkin is a bit on the large side. And then I've got my little skeleton, which I can cut those off and I can um, stick him to um, a wall or something. And I think that'll look quite good. Or, even though he's only sort of front, he's a fat, flat back charm, I could put him outside on the wall. I don't know yet, but it's certainly given me a bit of a direction for my um, property, which isn't really a house. Might be supposed to be a house, but I'm going to turn it into a shop. So on to the next kit. So secondly, it's the Abadashra counter. Now, as with the previous kit, I'm going to begin by um, adding some colour to this before I remove the pieces from the um, carrier sheet. I've got to figure out which bits I need to do um, what of. I think I'm going to have to do all sides on everything just to be safe, but I'm going to um, get my alcohol marker out and get colouring. All of the pieces are coloured and I'm ready to put it together. Now this is very straightforward. Um, I've just had to fold this piece, which I've already done because I've coloured in the um, sort of back corner pieces. And what I need to do is I need to start um, gluing in the drawers. Now they are technically drawers because on the real thing they would actually um, be removable. Obviously on this version we're looking at something that's more of a shelf. So the deepest of these goes on the bottom piece and I need to draw all that so that it is at 90 degrees to the um, back piece. I also need to remove the excess glue because as always I've put too much on but I am quite fortunate in that it does come off somewhat easily. Now once I've got all three of these in I have to stick the sides in place like so. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, carry on gluing these on and then I may go off camera just to um, stick it all together because my hands are going to be in the way. I've got my tweezers ready but at this stage I can't really use the tweezers because it's um, a wee bit difficult. But these are going in okay. And then my narrowest one, they do all seem to be nice and um, in the positions where I want them. This is the one thing I worry about when working at this sort of scale is the fact that the pieces are so much smaller than my um, lovely sausage fingers. Right, I think that is going to work so I'm going to give those a moment to dry and then we're going to stick the sides on. That is just a case of applying glue to each of the ends of these shelves and then um, holding it together. So I'll be back with that in a moment. Now whilst I'm still undecided whether my shop is going to be active or abandoned, I want some um, things on the shelves. So before I put the front of the drawers on, 
I thought I'd bet to um, get to making some kind of contents. So what I've done for these is I've made some little pieces of fabric basically. They are just folded up bits of fabric so it looks like they could be maybe a cloak, maybe a cloth. I'm not 100% sure but it will just give a little bit of something in the um, counter. And all I'm doing with these is dropping them. Lots of dropping. I'm just grabbing them in the corner with my tweezers so that um, I can position them where I want. And then I'm just adding a bit of glue to the back and I'm popping them into position where I want them. Just manoeuvring them into place. There's no real rhyme or reason. I just pulled out um, some scraps of fabric from things I've been doing fairly recently. And it's just going to give me that kind of idea of contents. So the next step obviously is to stick on the draw fronts, which I thought went on the edges, but they don't. So I do just need to um, finish this off just in case they are visible shouldn't be but we want it to look the part don't we and this is why I love the alcohol markers because they are great on this um, mount board material. So I'm going to take the first one and to attach them we put glue along the edge of the shelf. It's a draw technically as I say but um, in terms of this piece of furniture it's more of a shelf. So I'm just going to take one and I'm going to was going to do it very carefully. I'm going to position it into place on the um, piece. Just check that one underneath because it's the bottom one and it lines up quite nicely. Clear off any extra glue. And I've got the first one in place. And that obviously it's the same process for the other two. You could put the glue on all of them I would imagine before you stuck them down, but because I'm being a bit of a klutz today and dropping things where they don't want to go, I am being incredibly careful. Let's see if I can do this better with the tweezers. Yeah. There we go. And that's number two in position. And then finally the um, little top shelf. I always get the amount of glue I need wrong. It is very difficult to gauge this right at such a small scale. But there we go. And if I just get a spare cocktail stick, I can get that in and I can clean it up nicely. And there we have my little um, draw fronts in place. Obviously this is supposed to look like there are three drawers on each level. I've just put some stuff into them and you can see you can see it quite well actually in real life. I'm not sure how clear it is on the camera. Certainly in the top it is. Now I'm going to get the um, little acetate pieces out now to do the glass. 
So um, I'll be back in a moment. Now the glass for the front panel is um, shaped the same as the front panel and it's a bit trickier to get into position so I have already done that as you can see hopefully you can see my glue is drying on the back and I'm going to do exactly the same as I did with the top of the um, previous piece which is I'm just going around the edge with some glue this is some fresh glue so that it's a bit runnier um, just makes it easier to spread I want to get a good amount on here and stick this in place quite firmly I'm actually enjoying making these pieces because they are incredibly different to anything that I do at 1 12th scale I have um, never actually done a 1 12th scale shop although I have done some off scale shops that aren't I get this right that's right the front has got curved corners the back hasn't I was just making sure I got it the right way round very important that I get it the right way round and then if there's any excess glue clean it off now to put this together I'm going to pop this back onto its back and I'm going to apply a good dollop of glue to each side of the front I say a good dollop you want a good you want good coverage but you don't want um, loads and loads of it and then I'll get the put the the front piece and we will pop him into place making sure that it is level at top and bottom pop him into place like so and all I'm going to do is I'm just going to run my little cocktail stick up the sides now I'm not worrying too much about whether or not my um, glass is clean because I've said this shop is not going to be in the best of repair even if it's still operational um, but you know that's up to you you can be a bit more um, careful about these things or you could actually go around and add a lot more dirt to it I'm just going to put the top on now and again let's glue all the way around and I do actually have the instructions just off um, camera so I can see them and I can check that I'm not doing anything ridiculously stupid but to be fair the Petite Properties furniture is pretty good it's pretty straightforward and once you've made a couple of the kits you can sort of um, fathom it out quite easily so this one goes to the back and of course I've got a little bit of glue sticking out underneath but that doesn't matter it's just going to look like um, a bit of grime and what I'm going to do as before a little cocktail stick and that's moved thank you very much and we'll just pull that little bit off there it's not too bad I can live with that 
And so there we have my 148th scale haberdashery counter, complete with some little contents in the drawers. Here we have my finished shop counters, haberdashery and a display counter, a sort of freestanding, quite nice piece. It's going to look quite good in my shop, I think. I'm really pleased with how this has turned out and I am pleased that I've been able to give a hint of contents without um, too much trouble. I hope you've enjoyed this little um, foray into 148th scale and if you have please like, comment and subscribe and until next time, bye!